Hello game then. Today I want to show you how and why you should create your own packages. So let's start right away. My name is Vadim, aka Vadimsky. I like to think of myself as a game developer, although a large chunk of my professional time is spent writing utility functions, helper classes or even frameworks. And every time I stumble across the same problem. How do I efficiently reuse my utilities and frameworks? Sometimes I'll fix a bug or a new feature. And then I need to update all other projects that depends on this reusable code. But being a productive programmer, I just don't have time to manually fix these type of issues. I have deadlines to meet and coffee to drink. Maybe there is a solution for this problem. You can ask, but what about asset store? And sure, you can try to upload your framework to Asset Store. But if all you got is a couple utility classes, you will never pass asset verification process. Not to mention that updating assets can be a problem in itself. Well, starting from version 2018.3, Unity introduced to game developers the concept of packages, along with the package manager UI. Unity team also emphasizes many times that package will be the future format for all Asset Store content. And in my opinion, now is the perfect time to dive in on package creation. Let's see it in action. Why don't we open Unity and create a simple blank project? From the structure point of view, package is a self-contained Unity project, although naming convention is a little bit different. When you download package through the package manager window, unlike content from Asset Store, a package content doesn't get embedded directly to your project assets folder but gets referenced inside the project by assembly definition file. Later implies that you get rid of all the garbage from Asset Store and end up with a much cleaner project structure. Every project will have this packages folder, and by default, an empty project comes with the predefined packages. If you open manifest JSON file, you will find a list of all required packages with a corresponding version. You probably notice that this folder only have manifest JSON file. The actual packages are downloaded and stored inside library package cache folder. Go back to Unity and open package manager window. All packages that you can find with the search option are going to be from Unity technologies, and they are hosted on Unity private registry. As of time this video is created, Unity does not allow to host third-party packages on the private repository. Luckily, there are other options. For now, let's focus on creating local package so that we can upload it from disk. Through many years of developing Android applications, I come up with a handful of useful native utilities that help me handle Android API that I can't access from Unity. But copying scripts from project to project became kind of tedious, so I decide now is the perfect time to encapsulate these utilities inside the package. Let's navigate back to our empty project packages folder and create root folder for our package. A folder name should be the same as your package name and package name and Unity are following the specific convention. Separating by dots, type com, then company or author name, and finally the project name. The single most important file is package.json. Let's create it first. Unity provides a useful template, so that you don't need to type every field manually. Let's copy this template to a newly created package.json file and figure out what each line does. The name field is just the package name I described previously. Next comes package version number. This number describes left to right the package major version, minor version and patch version. These values must respect semantic versioning. I provide links in the description for more info on this topic. Next field is display name. The name you put here will show up inside Unity Editor Packages folder and in the package manager UI. Package description will only show inside package manager window when you click on the package name. In the Unity field you need to specify the oldest supported Unity version. Optionally, you can even specify Unity release number. The package that is not compatible with your version of Unity will not appear in the package manager window. The URL fields all can be pointing to your personal website. If the package manager can't reach the URL location, it will instead use specific local files of which we will talk about later. Other fields are not that relevant for this video, so you can research about them on your own. As usual, I'll be providing links in the description. For now, we are done with the package.json file. If you open package manager window, you will be able to see your local package. 
So far so good. Let's start to add in some content. The runtime scripts are going to folder called runtime. And if you want to add some editor scripts, you still need to create editor folder. All this naming is optional, but it is nice to follow the same convention, especially if you want to contribute to packages ecosystem. I find it very useful to provide samples wherever I can, even if I do not plan on publishing and distributing my package. This way I can easily refresh my memory on how to actually use package content. Looking back at package manager window, you can see that some packages have this neat sample section with a handy button to upload them to your project. It is actually not that hard to achieve the same in our package. Create a folder with the name samples. A character we add in the end is indication for Unity to ignore all contents inside this folder and does not track them with the .meta files. Next step is to add field called samples to the package.json file. It is a JSON list that can hold as many samples as you like. Now you can open Unity again and see that the package samples section has been updated. And last but not least, we need to create assembly definition for our runtime scripts. Let's do just that. Congratulations on creating our first package. You can now reference it from any Unity project on your local computer. But what if you want to share your package to fellow game developers or to your colleagues within a company? Well, it's time to learn how to distribute the package through Git URL. So, let's dive into this topic. I assume that you're already familiar with the concept of version control system and Git in particular. If not, then Git good, literally, and come back when you are. Get yourself Git desktop or Git bash console utility and choose your preferred version control provider. In my case, it's GitHub. Make sure you include README, GitIgnore and license files. Rename license file to license.md so that Unity can open it from package manager window. Also create changelog.md file that will be containing all changes we commit to this repository. As with the license.md file, you can also access the changelog file from the package manager window. The crucial step now is to open Unity project one more time and let Unity engine generate missing.meta files for our newly created content. Go ahead and publish repository to GitHub. Then copy repository HTTPS link and try to fetch it inside package manager window for different Unity project. Well, isn't that was easy. But there are a couple of concerns I need to address. First, every time we commit some changes to the package, we want to have the ability to update package from package manager UI. And for this to be possible, you need to increment package version number inside package.json file. Second, it would be nice to reflect changes to the package in the changelog file. Both these options are sharing the same issue. Every change to the package you commit requires manually keeping track of package version and changelog. And if something is manual, it also means that this something is error prone. So why don't we automate the process of package release? There is actually a GitHub workflow plugin that was created specifically for this purpose. It is called Semantic Release. It automates the whole package release workflow including determining the next version number, generating the release notes and publishing the package. But how does the plugin know what version number to choose and what release notes to generate? Well, it all comes from the commit message structure. Basically, every commit message should consist of message type and short summary. Message type is determining what version patch should be incremented. If your commit message contains type fix, then the patch portion of the version number will be incremented. If type is a feature, then the minor version, and if it is a performance or breaking change, then the major version number should be incremented. Let's hook up this plugin to our package. First create the folder called .github inside your package root folder. Then in .github folder create another folder named workflows. In this folder create a release.uml file. Go back to root folder and create .releaserc.json file. We can copy and paste the content of these files from our git repository for this tutorial. And as always, link will be in the description. Basically, every time there is a commit to master branch, the release.uml script will fire up and scan commit message using semantic release plugins. If it finds commit message type to be valid, it will automatically generate new release for your package. 
Let's push these changes to the GitHub repository. Then go ahead and change some scripts inside package folder, so that we have something to commit for our first release. This time the commit message will have a type fix. Right after you push the commit, if you open GitHub page for your package and go to Actions tab, you will see that release.uml action is in progress. Couple seconds later and we got our first official release. You may wonder why release number was not incremented. Well, the semantic release plugin is keeping track of version number from the previous releases. And since it was the first release that you create, version number will always start from this. Let's make another change to package content and create new release. Just follow previous steps. Now imagine putting all this time and effort in creating a beautiful package to then realize that first, you cannot update this package from package manager window, at least without a hurdle. And second, you cannot configure your package to be dependent on your other packages. And for me it was a deal breaker. As of time I'm recording this video, Unity have very limited support for importing packages directly from git links. Basically, after you add package, Unity saves package hash to the package log.json file. You need to manually delete this file every time you want to update your package. As far as dependency, the only options you have is to add dependency first to manifest.json file and then add dependency package name to the package file of your consumer package. But if you think about it, this really comes out as not an option. Just imagine every time you need to import some package, you also need to manually find and import all package dependencies. There are two solutions. One is hosting your personal private UPM repository. And second is by using open source project called OpenUPM. If your goal is to set up package ecosystem within your company or local network, then you should stick with deploying your own private repository. But if you just want to share your package to whoever might be interested in it, then open UPM is the gold mine that we need. Let's briefly talk about how it works. Open UPM team created a common line tool called Open UPM CLI to maintain the manifest JSON file. It can add, remove, and search packages in a terminal app like Bash, Gitbash, CMD, or PowerShell. When Unity detects the changes of the manifest file, it will resolve it and install or remove package for you. Let's go ahead and install Open UPM CLI. Just make sure you have npm installed first. Open your preferred command line utility and type npm install.global open upm CLI. When installation is done, let's upload our git package to open upm registry. Follow to openupm.com slash packages slash add. Fill out your package repository name and the rest of the fields. Then click verify package. Right after that, you will be prompted to submit pull request. You need to fork the open upm github project, then submit configuration file with information about your package and then create a pull request to the main OpenUPM repository. If this is the first package you add to the OpenUPM, the verification process may take some time, probably a couple of hours. An next pull request will be handled automatically and much more quicker. When your pull request is accepted, OpenUPM server will automatically add new package to the registry. You can see the result following the links to your package. Go to openupm.com slash packages slash your package name. There you should be able to see information about your package. Let's install package using OpenUPM CLI. Open your preferred command line tool and navigate to Unity project folder. And why don't we fetch information about our package, just to be sure it is ready to be used. Type OpenUPM, search, your package name. You should be able to see nice table with information about your package, version and after name. And finally type OpenUPM, add, your package name was not that hard actually. If you now open manifest.json file inside package folder, you will see information about OpenUPM scoped registry and associated packages. Now let's make some changes to our package, commit and push to GitHub. After new release created, UPM will automatically update package inside registry. For me it usually takes about 10 to 20 minutes. Go ahead and update the package from package manager window. Now I want to create new package and use our native plugins package as a dependency. To create new package, just follow the same routine we used previously. 
to add dependency open package.json file and add new field inside dependency object. The key would be our dependency package name, value is package version. Now go ahead and upload new package to UPM. And that's it. So today we learned how to create, update, maintain and publish your own Unity package. As of today there are a lot of great package creators and infrastructure to support them. But still there is a lot of room to grow. I strongly believe that this new feature will empower more developers to share their ideas and build up a healthy ecosystem. If you are a Unity enthusiast like me, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome content. And remember, be creative, work hard and code smart. See you later, game dev.